This is KGW News at 11. First tonight, we're getting an early taste of winter. You're looking live over downtown Portland. Record breaking cold could come this week and strong winds are also on the way. It almost looks cold out there, doesn't it? Let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino with what we can expect, Matt. Yeah, we're on the verge of much cooler air. It's dropped five degrees in the last hour. 40 degrees, though, that's not exactly bitter wintertime temperatures, right? But when I show you what's going on just to our east, you'll see the difference. Here we are at 40 of Portland, 45 in the Dow still, so they haven't really seen the cold air but it's 31 in Pendleton. It's down to 24 in Spokane, and this is the direction that our weather is coming from, from the north and from the east. What about the winds? They've been very light today. They're still very light, picking up a little bit of an easterly drift out at the airport and in Troutdale, but over in eastern Oregon, northeast winds at Hermiston at 25, Pendleton 28. They've gusted to nearly 40 miles an hour, and those north-northeast winds are bringing in very cold and very dry Arctic air. Now, these are the dew point temperatures. We're in the 30s, but look, Look, it's 15 6 0 as you head back up to the source region of our air. This is a measure of how dry the air is. It is really dry, really cold air that's headed our way. So here are the headlines for this much colder and windy overnight. Those east winds just beginning to pick up right now. It's only about 13 14 miles an hour at Crown Point, but it will be increasing. It's going to stay windy into Wednesday and record low temperatures are possible but I'm not quite sure we're going to do it because of the wind. The air will be cold and dry enough, but with the wind, it keeps things mixed. The record, all-time record low for Portland for October is 26 degrees, ironically set today and tomorrow, and we may stay just above that for the next couple of mornings. But we are under a wind advisory until 7 o'clock tomorrow evening for gusts as high as 45 miles an hour. Also wind advisories in the uh, Columbia Basin and on the east side of the Washington Cascades. Guys? Thank you, Matt, and the county has declared a cold weather advisory for tonight, whether we break records or not, and that means outreach workers are out in the community making sure those without shelter can get help. Even a single night of cold can be life threatening, and since the cold has come early, many people might not have the supplies they need to survive the conditions. That's why workers are giving out supplies like blankets and tarps to those sleeping outside. It's hard for folks to want to leave their camp sometimes unless it's very awful outside. And so if we can get them things to stay warm and healthy, and we know that our first responders are going out, checking on folks, and we know that our outreach workers are out there. So they, if there are people who really do need help, they're going to be able to get them somewhere where they can get warm and dry too. Extra shelters are also opening up tonight, including one at Union Gospel Mission. Hundreds more will open up in November. Let's talk about the wildfires that continue to rage out of control in California tonight from the northern part of the state through Los Angeles. Several local teams at this point have headed south. They're working to help this response effort down there. We're going to have more on that in just a minute. But first, let's check in with Jay Gray, who has the latest from the fire lines. The firefight has intensified across California. It just looks like the sky is burning. From the wine country outside of San Francisco, through the exclusive neighborhoods of West Los Angeles, flames swallowing multi-million dollar mansions in just seconds. Oh, this is probably the last time I'm going to see this neighborhood. Oh my God. Right now, the Kincaid fire in the northern part of the state is the largest and most dangerous. Fueled by dried out grass and brush and pushed by winds, at times gusting to hurricane strength. It's a dangerous season right now. The Santa Ana winds pick up historically in September and last through April. Those winds fanning the flames and carrying embers, sparking new fires, forcing teams to stay on the move and in the fight around the clock. Jay Gray, NBC News, Los Angeles. Local electric company PGE is sending workers down to Sacramento tonight. They'll help inspect power lines in the fire zone to see when electricity can be turned back on. Also, several Oregon firefighters are in California helping out as well. Let's go to KGW's Mike Benner. Here's more on what they're seeing down there. Yeah, Dan, we can tell you 300 men and women from different departments in the state have made the trip so far. They split up into three teams to take on three separate fires. We talked today to Assistant Chief Les Hallman with Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue. They're working on the Kincaid Fire burning north of San Francisco. After a very gusty weekend, they saw calmer conditions today, but it's still extremely dry and the wind is expected to pick up again tomorrow. The Kincaid fires burned over 74,000 acres. It's now 15% contained. What we're working on today is we're trying really hard to bring that containment up. Uh, and then we got over 200,000 people evacuated here. As you can imagine, we're also trying really, really hard to at least bring people back in certain areas 
Uh, but we're very nervous with this wind event coming tomorrow. We don't want to bring them back in too soon. So there's that balance. All right, Holman says it's especially humbling to work alongside firefighters who themselves have lost homes or have family that have lost homes in the fire. The Oregon crews are prepared to be on deployment for two weeks. Back to you. Hopefully all this help can help turn the tide down there. Mike, thank you so much. We'll get you caught up in some of uh, today's other headlines now. Woodburn High School's head football coach and PE teacher has been arrested, accused of sexually abusing a student. Police say this started when Nicholas Federico was messaging the student through social media. He's been with the district since 2011 and is on administrative leave right now during the investigation. Police say there may be other victims. Oregon now has three confirmed cases of the measles. They stem from the same flight to PDX that came from Amsterdam two weeks ago. One person on the plane was diagnosed with the measles shortly after landing. Two others on the same flight also have the measles now. One is from Lane County and another was visiting Washington County. These are just some of the spots where the infected people went, including the Costco on Heather Place in Beaverton. Health officials worry a lot of people may have been exposed. We have the full list of locations on our website right now. And the man who set up multiple hidden cameras inside workplace bathrooms will spend 12 years in prison. Johnny Chan was fired from his job at Kaiser as a Kaiser Permanente pharmacist after he was caught secretly recording co-workers. Then he was hired at Banana Republic, where he continued to record co-workers using the bathroom. Police say there were dozens of victims. Chan will also have to register as a sex offender. New at 11, a group of parents is frustrated by what they're calling an overwhelming problem with bullying at their kids' school. It's happening at Fir Grove Elementary in the Beaverton School District. Tonight, they took their concerns to the school board. KGW's Catherine Cook was at tonight's board meeting where parents made an emotional plea, Catherine. Well, Laurel, they say this has been going on for several years and has gotten progressively worse without a tangible solution. I'm asking for immediate review at the current bullying policies. For Grove parent Brian Reynolds says this month a bully pushed his second grade daughter on the playground so hard that she fell and broke her wrist. He says the principal told him there would be an action plan but couldn't share details with him because of privacy policies. He says it's hard to take assurances like that seriously given what happened when his daughter returned to school. That same day after we've been told by the principal on Thursday there's going to be an action plan. He's not going to be or this person is not going to be in the same room or around. He'll be dealt with differently. Uh, there he is on the swing set telling her I need your swing and I don't know how to keep my child safe. In Fur Grove, kids are afraid to go to school. Several other parents share their own experiences and frustration with how Fur Grove is or isn't handling student discipline. Honestly, it feels like our concerns are falling on deaf ears. And we're just really, really frustrated. Fur Grove's principal, Erin Miles, touched on the school's disruptive behavior action plan during her own presentation. She says they're giving teachers time off to meet with a special ed team and a student success coach to, among other things, help kids understand how their behavior impacts their community. With that time, we create plans with students in mind, not just the student who has the behavior needs, but the entire classroom of learners. We really make an impact with families. This group of parents says they'll continue voicing their concerns until school discipline policies change. They're also considering, as a last resort, filing a lawsuit against the district to better protect their kids. Laurel. Thank you, Catherine. And KGW is committed to taking a closer look at the issues in our public schools. Our investigative reporter, Kristen Severance, is spending an entire year inside Portland's Woodlawn Elementary. You can watch the first two episodes of the Inside Woodlawn series right now on KGW's YouTube channel. Oregon's only Republican congressman announced today he'll retire at the end of his term. That's January of 2021. Representative Greg Walden currently serves Oregon's 2nd District, which spans rural eastern, central, and southern Oregon. He was first elected to the House back in 1998. He's the top Republican on the powerful House Energy and Commerce Committee. In a video statement released this afternoon, the congressman said he's confident that he could earn another term in the House. I'm also optimistic that there's a path that exists for Republicans to reclaim the majority in the U.S. House, and I could return as chairman of the powerful Energy and Commerce Committee. But I also know that for me, the time has come to pursue new challenges and new opportunities. 
Walden said he's closing the 30-year-long public service chapter of his life and won't be running for any other office.